Hi folks, last year, tragically, the Dobson Pipe Organs Company's factory in Iowa burned to the ground. Uh, luckily, nobody was hurt, but this is a multi-generational manufacturing company that built some of the best pipe organs in the world, and they lost everything. All of their drawings, patterns, and tooling. An acquaintance reached out and asked if we could help replicate 12 of these tuning tools for the pipe organs. By all means, we were happy to help out, and it ended up being a really fun project. They're about five-eighths of an inch wide, an eighth of an inch thick, and about 20 inches long. We ended up buying some 01 tool steel off of a McMaster car. Ended up being the steric kind, which is always nice. I got to assume that's really good stuff. And then I thought, do I want to machine it, then harden it? Machine it, then harden it, then finish machine it? Or send it out for heat treat first and do everything in a hard state? What I want to show today, and Vince did a great job helping out with these parts, is we bought this material. We sent it out to Peter's heat treat. They've always been great to work with. We don't do a ton of heat treating, but the batch of these were done for shipped under $70, and that came back as hardened 01 tool steel, somewhere between 50 and 60 Rockwell. What's cool about this project isn't just showing how to hard mill with a regular carbide end mill, but also the fixturing. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, so we received the material back from Heat Treat. Luckily, I didn't have to remove one of the windows, and I didn't have to do anything special. Everything was going to fit just perfect. This part has to be machined on both sides. One place where I had to get creative was the work holding. I knew I was going to need a soft jaw that was big enough to fully support the cut area. This is bigger than the soft jaws we use for our mod vices, so I designed a custom one that bolted right to the fixture plate. I also added a variety of quarter 20 threads in the soft jaw so that I could bolt on fender washers to apply axial force and hold the part down during machining. Side benefit, these washers were also consumable. Next. I tested the heat treated material hardness, mainly because I was curious, but also because I could use that hardness to approximate the material in my simulation software so that I could get a decent estimation of the force and some of the other factors during a cut. I also demagged it before I cut the material. Now, if this was a bigger batch or, you know, if this was my day job, I would probably go for a specific tool. But John wanted to see if we could get this done with just regular tooling. So I settled on a stubby five flute from Lakeshore Carbide. I chose the five flute over the four flute because it has a thicker core, which means it's going to be a little stiffer. And with slotting, I'm definitely going to need that. This tool also has a 15 thou radius on the flute edge and that's going to help with tool life in this hard material and it's also going to let me use the adaptive and make a nice 3D finish with the same tool. Plus this tool is about half the cost of a uh, specialized six flute hard mill. Next was the can. My main concern with this was getting a nice clean cut with the minimum amount of part vibration. Because we couldn't use a vise to hold the end of this down and there was just washers pulling it down, that was my main limitation. I knew the tool could take a much larger cut than I took, but almost always comes down to work holding. My spindle speed was right around 3000 RPM and that made a surface speed of 200. It's a little bit high for full slotting, but I was reading the chips the whole time and I was right on the edge. My feed per tooth was half a thou. My axial depth of cut was 10 thou. It sounds good, it looks good, and Again, another one of those things that it wasn't worth trying to just rush it because I also only had one extra piece of material. Turtle wins the race, right? Slow and consistent every time. Now that the slotting was done, it was time to find out the overall length of the part and attach an adjustable end stop to the last mod vise on the fixture plate. I used a 3D adaptive tool path to rough and finish all in one for these sides right here. Same spindle speed, 200 SFM, running a cutting feed rate of 50 inches per minute with a maximum step down of 125. So pretty much I stepped down the full depth of the part and I cut this from the bottom up. So I was stepping up 2007 inch, which is my fine step down, with a radial depth of cut of 5 thou. Now Fusion's telling me right now my feed per tooth is 3.2 thou, but in reality it is almost a thou. 0.92. One of the things that took a little bit of creativity was the boundaries for this cut, mainly because I didn't want the tool to overlap and cut into the material that was still there. And I actually did that once and I did explode one tool, but I didn't get it on video, so sorry guys. An interesting thing to note is because of this type of cut, I was using much more of the flute 
and it sounded better there was a lot less heat in the chips the chips were silver they weren't blue or you know burnt almost burnt which how that uh, initial slotting kind of was finish was nice and these parts were getting tossed in the tumbler i didn't want a knife edge so i added a contour with a little negative radial stock to leave so that i could fatten up that edge then i slotted the end using the same recipe as the other side here are the parts right after machining there are slight tool marks visible from that adaptive tool path the next step was putting these parts in our tumbler to see if i could match our sample part this had the added benefit of smoothing out the whole thing it took off the dark surface finish from the hardening treatment and it just made these things look finished I'm not sure which media we have in our Mr. D Burr, but I was running it wet and time was around an hour to an hour and a half per part. All right, what would I change if I was gonna do this project again? I would definitely knock down the spindle speed for the slotting just a little bit. I'd like to be seeing a purple to blue instead of that, you know, slightly burnt silver. I did notice a little bit of tool wear and it also could have been the part vibrating a little bit if i was to add a couple more washers next time that would definitely help hold that part down as far as the tooling i really like the lakeshore carbide five flute i've used that tool in a good amount of materials titanium steel everything and it's always been good to me it is nice using a tool that's half the price of the tool that you're quote unquote supposed to be using that's what this is all about you know pushing the limits just seeing what you can do with what you have as you can see, I was able to finish the project and it's always fun helping somebody in need. As always folks, hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed. I'd also like to say thank you. It's my understanding that people from all over the world came together to help Dobson in various ways. We were very proud to be ever so small uh, a part of that and we're glad to hear that they're, uh, they're going to be able to rebuild uh, and move forward. So as always folks, take care. See you soon.